Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery, and those of you that have been here before know that this position on my shelf, top left, is always reserved for the oldest of my systems. The oldest of my systems at this point is a nice even figure in terms of its age. It's 300 days of age. And the reason it's set up the way you see it here is we've been doing our best to try to get the worms to make their way over into this section of the bin covered with plastic allowing for the other end of it to continue drying a little bit and it's been going this way for quite some time it's really easy I didn't have to take notes because the 300 days consists of 200 days of everyday composting and then it turned into 42 days which is six weeks 42 days of no feedings just foraging what I refer to and then the remaining 58 days um, was originally started as a migration type setup the idea being they're going to move out we've got depopulated castings the worms can get relocated but sometimes when the material is a little bit more damp or at least my theory is that it takes longer when the material is damp the worms are not as motivated to exit go find something better so they just stay so the drying is in my mind a pretty important part of that migration so I started treating this as sort of a mini wedge because some people just run their systems that way always put the fresh stuff in here keep pulling the finished compost out of there so we experimented as like a mini wedge rather than migration because migration seemed like it was just dragging on for a little bit too long and then over here on the bench if you look down oops ring the bell I already set this system up here 31 days ago and I built it extra big I even came in a few days ago maybe a week ago to build it up even more so I've got enough material here to build up two systems because Today the worms get moved out, moved into their new bins, but first I got to arrange things here. I was even thinking of integrating some food into here. Not going to waste your time with that. By the time we get back here, we're going to have the actual worm bin out here so we can do the haul out and get the worms set up in their new home. All right, sorry for the long intro. Let's get to work. Alright, they look pretty good. And no, your eyes don't deceive you. This bin here is a little bit wider. And that's why I refer to these as my wide bins and these as my narrow bins. Otherwise, they're about the same height. And they're about the same length. It's only this width that's a little bit different, you know. I mean, if you were to slip the other one in here, it would not be much different. But um, there is a little bit of a difference in capacity of these two containers. So we're ready for the um, worms to get moved into their new homes. And uh, now it's time to go back over to the shelf and grab the 300 day old system, bring it over here so we can do the worm haul out. Mm. Definitely starting to question whether we're going to have enough space in this little plastic container to extract the contents of our feeding area. Let's take a peek at how things are looking in here. Lots of nice castings. It's probably because what used to be all the worms in the system are probably almost all here at this point. On each occasion when we've come back in here, we've almost always found a good number of worms still hanging out in the old castings. And that was the whole idea behind leaving it uncovered. I'm just wondering if we're still in that same situation or are we getting at least a little bit closer to a batch of nearly depopulated castings. Like over here already we've got some castings that have a good number of worms in them but it does seem like as you work your way over further and further from the feeding area the material is for the most part depopulated and I'm also assuming it's also for the most part had enough time for any cocoons that were in the material to hatch and for the babies to also gradually make their way over into the the more damp end of the bin where things are more comfortable from a worms perspective and since we're right here on the edge, this part was plastic covered, creating this recirculation effect, sort of like a little bit of a greenhouse effect. So that's why we've got an edge over here that I think just doesn't dry off quite as much because of its 
you know, its proximity to the recirculating moisture. Who knows, maybe the plastic was even hanging over a little bit, creating a little bit of a humidity zone over there. So I'm guessing, I don't know, it didn't seem like too much. It only seemed like maybe two or three fingers, maybe maximum the width of my hand that extends down into the finished castings side of the partition that we've created here in which we still have some worms but not a huge number. So I think we're definitely approaching a point where we've got almost completely depopulated castings. All right, I, something I try to not do is accidentally relocate worms further from where I want them to be. <laughs> if anything, I should relocate them somewhere closer to where I want them to be, but I'm not here to individually pick worms out of the finished castings and get them to join in with the rest of the crowd. We're gonna, we're just gonna do a little clean up later, you know, I'm gonna set up some sort of like a little baiting station within these finished castings to try to collect up the stragglers and you know, whatever amount of time that takes, it shouldn't shouldn't take too long because the material will be left to continue drying, making it less and less comfortable for the worms to remain in. And what I set up for them will be some sort of a comfortable, cozy spot to be. And that's how we'll take care of getting the rest of these little guys out of the material. At this point, I'm tre treating the rest of this as pretty much our um, worm zone. I'm even wondering if it might not be too difficult. Yeah, it seems like I could just grab a big, huge handful of nice finished castings and deposit them over on the side of the bin that is the finished castings. I don't want to bring too many worms over in the process, but it did seem like this top layer was somewhat depopulated. Yeah, maybe not. I might be bringing worms over with me. It just seemed like it would be nice if we can reduce this down to being almost all worms, but I know for a fact that it's going to just be um, a mishmash. It's going to be a blend of some of the residual leftover bedding that we gave them, all the castings they've been making over time. And I'm also wondering if this might be a good opportunity to actually scoop out some of these large pieces of bedding so that we could really get a good look at how many worms got together here. Because, you know, with the exception of one or two worms that are on it or in it, we did manage to remove the better portion of them. I guess that was in part the reason I wanted to go with large chunks of bedding with the idea that we could sh shake off the worms hanging out on the stuff and separate the worms from the stuff pretty quickly if we should want to. And I mean, it's not super quick, but it's it's doable and it's pretty thorough too, right? If you start looking at some of these objects that we've already separated from the collection of worms, we've only bought with us um, a couple of hitchhikers that we could easily return to the, the collected worm batch here. So I'm just going to keep pressing on here, I think, you know, if I can pull out good large chunks or leave them behind or whatever, but I'm not going to go down to the minute, minuscule level. I, I'm going to look to pull out large pieces if it's easy enough to scoop out a couple smaller pieces without taking too many worms along. Then let's do it. But um, this sounds like a good candidate for being sped up and played back quickly. <laughs> <laughs> later instead of being watched every agonizing moment of it so let me just get to work on this and let's see how long it takes Well, I did manage to collect up a pretty good amount of this stuff. It's probably even more than I can hold with my hand. So I think that's also good from the point of view that when we go to unload the feeding area, we're not going to overload the transport container because I do feel like we're, we're going to be cutting it pretty close. I think we've got a um, large amount of material to fit into here, and I hope it fits. And I'm not even worried about some of the worry the worms scurrying back into the finished castings end of the bin. 
because we we are going to do that roundup later on try to collect up some more some more of those wormies that are just stragglers never made it over here and I think that whole thing about letting the material dry will give the worms good motivation to gather in the collection area that we create for them here and there there's stuff coming through I believe these are tea bags every now and then I bump into a tea bag I thought I spotted something earlier that looked like one which I removed you might have noticed it they're just tea bags that don't seem to break down even though they do look a lot more weathered when you know now that they're been in the, the bin for quite some time but it does seem like they're just not gonna completely break down for whatever reason so yeah a couple of these last few handfuls are probably gonna have the greatest number of worms with all the worms diving down and down trying to get away from my very uh, intrusive attempt to remove some of the bedding in here and as you can see we're already at the rim of this little container so I'm going to see what I could do about maximizing the space here and it's going to mound up it's going to have to be a little pile on top in fact maybe I'm starting to think we might be better off getting another container over here well no you know let's see I think it looks like it might work we should be able to fit these wormies into here but I mean since we're going into two containers here I'm questioning now how I'm going to separate this population I'm almost thinking we're gonna to have to go into one of the bins and empty this thing and then to the best of our ability scoop out approximately half of them in order to move them over into the other bin or I could just try to somehow in some other fashion I guess try to figure out how I can get only half out of here but I think that'll do we got ourselves lots of worms in here. Lots of castings too, accounting for some of the weight. But lots and lots of worms. So I'm definitely going to be curious to hear what people think. So my, my approach to coming up with the estimated worm count for each of the bins that we're launching today is just going to be to take the, the whole amount, the whole amount of worms that are estimated to occupy this container here and split it in half and each of the bins will get credit for starting with the same number of worms and that's how we're going to determine worm count for our two new African nightcrawler systems so now this stuff's also got to get moved over this has no purpose here anymore so we've got some nice bedding type materials here that we can make use of I mean sometimes I'll just leave these sort of things with the castings and then at some point when we haul the babies out of here since we will be back you know we'll be back in here to collect up not only yeah I mean I'm treating it almost like a nursery but at this point it's more stragglers the nursery aspect of this kind of occurred um, as part of the the bin just being in that wedge pattern you know so uh, we gave them a good long period of time of setting up an edge of the, the bin that was intended to uh, lure them over to attract them into a more cozy space to be and some of them stayed behind because we never managed to dry off the existing material so much that it would um, you know create an environment that the worms want to leave or find something better so I think spreading it out as much as possible across the entire area of the bin will give us the greatest amount of exposure to the air for for drying and it won't take much I think so I'm not even that much of a hurry to set up the bait station to collect up these stragglers I'll do that at a later time I believe for now I think it's just get this thing out of our way and it's time to launch off some worms <laughs> okay so here's the larger of the two and this is the one that I'm gonna dub as container number one they're both gonna have the same date and description but I figured number one would be the one that we launched first, and it would also be, um, oh, oh man, this thing's heavy. It's going to be the one where we get to experiment with this idea of <laughs> somehow getting only half of the worms to come out of here to um, to occupy this bin. So maybe, maybe it is best that we just unload the entire container. Everyone's going to be able to get a good look at how many worms we collected, give me their estimates, and then we'll just trust that 
I, um, I successfully managed to separate the pile into two even halves. So are we ready? I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> Should be interesting. Oh boy, makes me nervous too. Oh boy, yeah, look at that. We got a lot of worms in here, that's for sure. I don't know if I had to estimate, I would say it's probably a good couple pounds. I don't know how many pounds. Five pounds, maybe. Okay, so now, just curious what other materials I left behind in here. I can see some little scraps of cardboard and stuff, not the end of the world. And I'd love to do a nice worm release, fast playback. And I guess we could, but we first need to collect up half of these worms. So what's a good way to do it? Grab as many as I can right off the surface, I suppose, and then maybe use the capacity of the plastic container as my gauge for how good I'm doing. I'd be curious to hear what people think in terms of how I could have done this better. So please leave your comments on critiquing my style and method. <laughs> And this is the larger container, so I was kind of hoping we'd end up with a little bit more worm population in here. But I somehow got this feeling like, I don't know, did I haul out the greater number of them? Maybe one handful coming back in, and then it'll feel to me like we've done an even split. And I think I'm already starting to get a little number in my mind, taking into account that a great number of these are small little wormies. So let's let them get situated in their new home. Then we can launch off bin number two. I'm not sure if anyone noticed every now and then there was a little worm landing in the bin. That was just me picking them off my glove. I must have pulled off five or six of them. So you do have to be careful because they'll stick to your glove and they'll be out of view and you won't even know they're there. And then next thing you know, you've dropped them on the ground and that's that. So this is, um, I guess, officially the launch of bin number one. But guess what? We're only halfway through with the fun. Time to get the other bin and launch off bin number two. <laughs> So maybe here in a direct comparison, before and after, maybe it's possible to see the, the width difference. Maybe not. It's really minor. But I did manage to, I think, do a fair split on setting up the bedding. So the whole idea was that both systems were built equally. And I guess the other thing that wasn't really shown very quickly when I was kind of throwing these together and making two out of one was that I did bring food down from the uh, refrigerator. I threw some leaves and stems of beets as well as some bits and pieces of corn cob. So that should be pretty cool. Well, we're almost done here. It's just a matter of releasing these wormies into their new home, and then we can call it a day. So once again, I'm looking to hear everyone's estimates, not for how many worms we're seeing in any one of the bins, but I'd like to have just an overall number, which I can split in half. So once again, don't forget to leave a comment and let me know what your estimate is. Let's spread these little guys out and try to get a more traditional launch video here of the wormies situating themselves in their new home okay have at it boys So now it's funny because I keep bumping into stuff that are remnants of old feedings. So the bin that we just retired was the bin where we had done the lasagna feedings. That was kind of a cool novelty. And then I also had my initial use of my worm chow set up in the shape of my logo, the AV logo. So those were just some of the fun things we did in that last system. So hopefully we're 
going to start doing a whole bunch of similar fun stuff in these two sister bins here. And African night crawlers, African night crawlers that came to me as cocoons originally from the crazy worm lady, Emily, years ago. And I just got done visiting bin number one to give it the same sort of scattering of leaves as a nice little top treatment. And then I think I'll also get back in here and to to create a couple custom coverings and stuff, maybe even cover up with plastic just to make sure we don't lose any moisture in the beginning, let things become really cozy for these worms. So I really look forward to hearing people's comments and input on worm counts and all that other fun stuff in the comments. But as for the video, we're done here. I've got a few things I need to take care of as far as putting stuff away and cleaning things up, fashioning some covers and other things, maybe updating my spreadsheet, but I'm not gonna keep around for all that boring stuff. Before I go, let me just really quickly say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always very much appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.